Okay, so we're seeing how to install the My Educator add-in. So first of all, I'm gonna to need to be on either uh, Office 2019 or Office 365. And if it's Office 365, it needs to be you know, pretty current, like at least as new as uh, Office 2019. So it's, it's possible that you have an old copy of 365 that you've done something strange to to keep it from updating, but typically it updates automatically. So if you're on 365, you should be okay. Now I'm gonna to come to the Insert tab, and right here it says Get Add-ins. Let's take me to the Microsoft Add-in Store. And then here I'm gonna search for my educator, no space. And we should see the My Educator add-in. The My Educator add-in is a tool for doing assignments based in office-based assignments. It may require additional purchase, or in your case, it may require additional free thing that you already got. So we'll say okay, or we'll say add. Uh, yeah, there's some kind of license, that's great. And that should bring you a new icon onto your ribbon here. Uh, just looks like the My Educator logo in red. Why they chose red, I don't know but that's what they did. Uh, so we say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this to open it. And that will bring up the little taskbar over here on the right. And now here's where I have to get my My Educator code. So for my code for the assignment. So what did I do? In Learning Suite, I, I followed the assignment here or the assignment that's due the Fibonacci sequence due the 27th of January. I followed that link and that opened up, took me right here. Now this code, is gonna identify you. That's why you have to be logged in to be able to get your code. This is gonna identify you, identifies the right course and the right assignment. And so with that code, which I can just copy with this button right here, I should be able to come back to the add-in and paste that into the add-in. And now I'll say start. Now the add-in will communicate with the My Educator servers, figure out what you're trying to get. It should build the right sheet, everything you need to be able to do the assignment here. So that's what we're after. So you don't have to download a file and open it. As part of the thing we're trying to get past with this new approach to doing it is that downloading, especially downloading macro enabled workbook files that communicate with web servers off of your machine, that gets most um, antivirus software a little antsy. Um, and so there was just getting to where people were having a really hard time getting it because the antivirus was, was stopping it. Um, and so now you don't download the file, instead it um, generates it. But it turns out that for us to be able to grade VBA, we do need to get some VBA into this book. And that's what, all of your assignments will start with a page that looks like this. Hey, you gotta configure this workbook for grading VBA. And it will give you a link right here. Perhaps by the end of the semester, this will already come in as a link. But right now, it's just, just text. But if I hit F2 to enter this cell or start editing this cell and then hit enter, once I've edited and enter it, then Excel goes, hey, that's a link. And it turns it into a hyperlink for you. Um, I, I believe that I can make that happen automatically. But for now, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Now that it's a link, you can just click it and it will actually open that workbook then directly. Uh, and this is opening a macro enabled workbook, but there, it's a lot more mild than the other stuff that we used to download. So I'm just gonna say, okay, open up that workbook. I'll have to enable the macros. It should prompt me to enable macros. It's gonna download a workbook. Enable content. Do you wanna make it trusted? Sure. So here's the workbook that it just opened. You'll notice I took the tabs off, uh, like the ribbon. I don't want you editing this workbook. But this workbook's part of the grading system for my educator. It's gonna to try to find any open workbooks you have that need to be injected. And I'll click proceed. And if everything goes well, it should find this workbook and, and give me a message. This workbook is now configured to grade the VBA portion of this assignment. That's great news. I'll close this one. I'll dismiss this one. And now I'm ready to roll. How are we doing? So far so good? Now I can hit the next button. In fact, I can hit the next button even before I do that part. As long as I do that part before I try to grade it, I should be okay. I click next and then here it gives me the assignment. It tells us that Leonardo Fibonacci was a 13th century Italian mathematician. Whew, smart, smart guy. By the way, he's the one that got us off Roman numerals. Any of you ever tried to do math with Roman numerals? No, no one ever teaches you that. I mean, they taught you Roman numerals like second or third grade or whatever. 
but you don't learn math because what do you have to do? Like for addition, you have to memorize what it is. There's no help. Multiplication, subtraction, you have to memorize what they all are. That's the whole great thing about, about the Arabic n number system is that it has place value. So you, you have to memorize nine things. And then you gotta remember this three plus four is seven. I mean, you can count it on your fingers, it's not that bad. But then you can start dealing with, with places and it goes great. It's called Arabic, but where do these, where does this approach actually originate? Do anyone know? India. India, yeah, this is actually India, but it came to us, it's kind of through the Arab world, so we call them Arabic numerals, but anyway. So you may have been familiar with the Fibonacci series. It, make, it shows up in the Dan Brown book, Angels and Demons, that talk about this particular uh, sequence. It's pretty simple. You take the, the first two uh, symbols are given, zero and one, and then the next, or rather the next in the sequence is just the sum of the prior two. So one is zero plus one, two is the sum of the two before it, one and one is two, three then is the next one and so forth. Uh, and it goes on forever, it goes on forever. You only have to calculate the first 50 here in this assignment. So there's the overall uh, information. Next thing we have here, make a sub procedure to generate the Fibonacci sequence. Um, and then it gives you some more specific directions. Add a module to this workbook, create a sub procedure named make Fibonacci. Do you think it has to be named exactly that? It so totally has to be named exactly that. Like so much for so that when you, when you hit, like you're gonna grade it, you're ready to grade it, you hit next. I'm gonna make sure that I can find that. Before I issue you a grade, I'm gonna make sure that you spelled it right. Now what happens if you spelled it wrong? If you, if you spelled it wrong, the, the, the grader is gonna fail at this point and it will actually take you into the, the code where it's wrong. Not to your code, but it will take you to something that I've set up for you. So I have not, I'm, I'm set up to grade, but I haven't made this procedure yet. So I'm gonna click next and it's gonna start to look at this and say, hey, are we doing okay? It says, no, we got a problem. Now this is kind of an interesting, this is part of what you imported. Is it says, listen, we've got a set procedure called make Fibonacci sequence exists. It's really simple, mostly comments. And it just says, we're gonna to try to run the make Fibonacci sequence. This if false says, we're not really ever gonna to try to run it. We're just gonna to try to compile. And if this can compile, then we know that that exists. If it can't compile, you didn't name it right. And you're gonna come right here. I tried to give you a good comment in here that says, if you have an error here while you're trying to submit, it's not a problem with the grader. It's because you don't have this thing named correctly. So great, I'm gonna go ahead and do that part. I'm gonna insert a module. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a thing called make Fibonacci. Uh, can't edit, can't edit module it's because I'm in break mode. So I'm gonna hit stop, the little square button up here will reset my code. And I should be able to say sub make Fibonacci. Now, I'm not even gonna make it do anything, but, the, but before we actually set out to grade this, we're gonna make sure that that is there. So now that's there, excellent. Uh, don't submit now, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try again, next. Now it's trying to check to make sure everything's there and it says, great, I, I can't, at least it looks like we can grade the thing. We at least got the thing named right. There's something for us to grade. I'll say submit now. And it's going through and it tells me here, I got zero. I think I should have got something. At least I got the sub procedure there. Didn't do much. Um, and then the next button should show me the detailed feedback, everything that I missed. In the last class, and this is Excel 2019 that I'm on here on the podium, this didn't actually show up. So I'm we're gonna see if this just sits here and says loading. So there may be some issues on 2019 that I'll have to work through. That should have shown by now, but this should show you kind of detailed feedback. Here's what you got, and here's the things that we tested that it, that it failed on and give you some guidance on how to how to go back and try it again. When you go back, you can just hit the try again button right here, and that should take you right back in to where you're ready to work the assignment again. You don't have to start a new workbook, you can just continue right here in the one that you're in. So uh, that's the process. Questions? Yep. Oh yeah, so here's the question. Um, how, do, how does my grade get determined? And the answer is for homework and for projects, you get two submissions. Actually, you can make as many submissions as you want and the grader will keep giving you feedback.
but your grade is determined as the highest score you got on the first two submissions. So you make your first submission and you'll go, oh, wow, I did kind of bad on that, but now I kind of see what the grader is looking for. I'll go back and modify it again, and then your second submission is gonna be the one that counts. Actually, very occasionally, someone will make a second submission and it's worse than their first one. In that case, I'll give you the higher score. <laughs> but anyway, so that, um, what was your question? The first two. Oh yeah, so the question is, does that submission have to be done in time? And the answer is, if you turn in late, um, you can still get credit, um, but you lose 10% per day. So if you turn that second submission in on the day after it's due and you got full credit on it, it'll be 90%. If your first submission, which was turned in before it was due, was 80%, you'll get the 90%, you'll get the higher, you'll get the higher grade, but then it'll be discounted. By the way, you have essentially a week to turn those in. After a week, it stops deducting. So if you put things off till the end of the semester, you can at least get 30%, you know, if you do really well on it. So there's always some incentive to get it done if you haven't done it, but you know, you're kind of losing value as you go. Uh, now, because this is our first time, I'm gonna set this one to be the highest of your first three submissions. So you'll kind of get an extra bite at the apple. Um, it's only 10 points worth 1% of your overall grade, but, um, and it's really most, mostly because, you know, if something goes wrong, I wanna have a little more time without me having to go and delete one of those submissions, which I will always do, will be glad to do. You know, if you say, wow, this went wrong for some reason, and I go, yeah, what was wrong? Was you coded it wrong? Then, you know, it stands, but if there's some kind of other error that we're still trying to work things out, I'll be glad to delete that submission and give you another chance. The other thing you should always realize about the automatic grader is that it does a great job when you've done something close to what it expected you to do. But it's really possible for you to have a really small error that will um, like take off all the points. And so you should not look at the auto grader as the final resolution of your grade, unless you're happy with it. If you're unhappy with it, you know, you don't look at it and say, you know what, I, I don't think this was fair. And the truth is the auto grader doesn't think at all. And so you're already starting off from a pretty good position. So in that case, you'll come and see me and we'll take a look at it and I'll, I'll say, you know what, I totally agree with you. You deserve, you know, you don't deserve 20%, you deserve 80%, you know, for this. So maybe probably not full credit usually, but so anyway, that, um, that's kind of how grading will go. Your question? Ah, so the question is, you know, how, what does the auto grader actually do? Does it even, even look at my code? And the answer is, we kind of went round and round on this, how we should do it. It is possible for this auto grader to look at your code, but for that to happen, you have to come in here and say on the developer tab, macro security, eh, allow trust access to the VBA project. That would let me actually go look at your code. Um, and the truth is that's kind of a dangerous thing to do. You're, you're letting VBA, in this case, you're letting VBA code write other VBA code. Um, and so ultimately we decided not to do that. So the grader never looks at the code you wrote. Instead, it runs your code and looks at what your code does. Uh, and so it will typically change the starting conditions, something, and then it will run your code. So, so you're, not, you're never sure exactly what it's gonna, how the workflow is gonna be set up when your code runs. So you do have to make it do what it's supposed to do. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't look at your code. So that means you could write this really inefficiently, and as long as it does it right, you're gonna get full credit. If this is like a computer science class, a big part of what you're getting graded on is you know, did you do it with style? You know, did, is, is what you're doing efficient? And here, what we're saying is, you know what? You get the job done, great. Um, whole efficiency thing, it turns out that you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM and you know, a quad, a, a, a quad Four, what is it called? Four core, a four core processor, you know, i7 processor can overcome a world of sins. So we're more interested in do you get it right logically, not necessarily being most efficient about it. Question. Ah, yeah, yeah. So the question is when, when does it count? I hit next and it's going through here and if it had a failure here, was that a submission? The answer is no. Everything that happens before you get to the submit now button, that's a courtesy check. That's me going, you know, let's just check and make sure that it looks like there's something to grade here. 
we don't want you to be on a blank workbook and hit submit and then get, get zero for it. So yeah, until you hit the submit now, that's when it's gonna count. Okay, question? So the question is, if you do more or less than what the prompt asks, um, do, you, do you get left out? And the answer is, if you do less, most likely you'll. For example, an asterisk, a title, uh, depending on how much you write it, Ah, OK, yeah. So here's what the great student has said here. I made it look like this. It said uh, um, like number and then value. And uh, I said one, two, three, and then I said zero, one, one, oops, zero, one, one, two, three, five, et cetera. Um, now, what this is supposed to do, what the instructions tell you to do is make it so that wherever the active cell is, you start the Fibonacci sequence there. So it'll be zero, one, two, and, and moves down. So if you started, if, you, if the active cell was here, and you push this other stuff off to the left and down, and your Fibonacci sequence actually went down from the active cell, that should give you credit. Um, and if it didn't, you know, this is, remember, this is all new. And so let's come, help me understand, you know, why it failed and take a look at it and you know, come see me in my office. So yeah, the one thing that could be dangerous about this is that, you know, if your code says, you know, go over here, if I run it in column A, you're sunk. That's not what happened here, because I know where I run it, it's not column A. Um, because you'd be trying to, to, to I don't even know what comes before A, but you'd be trying to reference this column that doesn't exist, and that would cause a problem, so, yeah. Yeah, remember, this is not gonna be especially elegant this first semester through this, but it was especially free, yeah. So, any time there's an error, that's what you're gonna, the, the mantra, you're gonna say, well, at least it was free. All right. We're expecting there to be issues as we work through here. Okay, other questions? Okay. So I'm going to stop that recording. I'll make that a separate recording. Um, I'm going to stop recording. Is there one we said? Oh yeah, stop recording right there. Do you want to stop cloud recording? Yes, I do.